And hello, welcome back. We will take a look at our heat transfer. Boy and pin perform today. And this is probably going to be one of my last videos, at least for today's video making. I'm sure you didn't, you didn't really need to hear that, but okay, never mind. Yes, I'm feeling, oh, that's a long day of video making. Um, and I'm pretty much about, you know, need about time for a break, right? But anyway, uh, yes, I... In the last video, we were talking about boy and pin perform. We have seen what the hot room case looks like, and now we can look at the thermocouple test case. And of course, we want to um, eventually make our own uh, little case where we have a time varying boundary condition, and see you know uh, whether it, or what kind of uh, flow pattern it actually generates inside a a loop or something like that with a natural convection. So, um, and of course we can do a false convection case as well, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I've just run the thermocouple test case. Alright, I'm going to clear. This is the thermocouple test case we are talking about, and I just did an all run since the last video. It's about 90 seconds, so let's do a touch uh, thermocouple test.foam, and this will help us to run pair of view on it. Okay, so let's take a look at how this case is set up. All right, so there's an I default T U P M P R G H. For four on the right, you kind of know the one on the left, I default that comes from the radiation. So, see the constant file, radiation properties. Yep, we have uh, discussed this already. Finite volume, degree of uh, discrete ordinates method. Yeah, uh, and system. We have seen that it hardly has any new file. Okay, so let's take a look at the results quickly. So we can move on, see what, what else we can learn from here. Then we try and make our own little case. Okay, so this is a... Uh, this is our uh, region of uh, interest, okay? For now it's a box, but we can use the wireframe to see what's inside, which is basically nothing. Uh, Alright, it doesn't look very interesting at all. Let's see how the case is set up. Um, uh, rescale to see, yeah. The thing is almost, almost, almost like uniform temperature. Okay, you can see where how it plays over time. So it doesn't really seem to change much. So looks like those uh, boy and pimple form cases aren't exactly very interesting at this point in time. Okay, but uh, yeah, we see, we see how we can actually put in the radiation models here. That's what this case is perhaps very useful for. Because we see uh, the disc, uh, finite volume discrete ordinates method and we see we can see how FE solution is written okay so we have this which uh, helps deal with the radiation bit and all of this which deals with the rest of the stuff okay rest of the things that need to be solved and then we have a pimple pimple kind of a solver here that we need to add instead of a simple entry, the simple algorithm entry. Uh, yeah. What else is there? Let's take a look at the temperature file. So basically, the whole wall, the whole wall is uniform at eight seven three point one five. Why is that interesting? I, I, I'm not, I have no idea at all. But okay. Um. Yeah, the internal field was this much, and the uh. Walls are at this temperature, so probably we should not be looking at uh, the boundaries per se. We might want to have a slice in the middle to see the temperature variation. So let's apply, apply a slice filter. Data, common slice. Okay, so apply the slice. And the slice should be seeing a temperature differential. Okay, so let's go 
Yeah, now now you see. Now we we see the important bits. Okay. So at the beginning, yeah, at the beginning we we see. Uh, we suppose this sort of a uh, fluid in the middle, <clears throat> and the rest of the sides are hot, and the heat is being conducted into the fluid. All right. Okay, so that is what the story is here. Semi interesting, but not very interesting. Okay, so it's one of the most simple cases there. And now the next thing is that okay, we've seen we've seen how simple buoyant simple form and buoyant simple form work in terms of uh, natural convection and force convection solving. Um, yeah, just for interest, let's take a look at this. Yeah, it's all zero, all no slip. Yeah, so it's not very uh, interesting in that sense, but we we have gleaned from the last few tutorials at least an idea of how to write up our own uh, solver, our own file, for for um, you know having a time varying boundary condition. So let's see the case that we want to try and set up. That's actually is more interesting to look at using a boy on paper form since the tutorial cases are pretty boring. All right, um, let's say we want to have an adiabatic wall here. All right, and then another adiabatic wall. And then here we have T equals to maybe 300K, a heat sink kind of a thing. Three. 100 Kelvin. Well, it's very hard to write with the mouse. <laughs> T equals to 300 Kelvin as some sort of a heat sink. And then we have some sort of a varying time varying input. Okay. So um, this will be some function of time. And maybe the max will be 400, or the minimum will be 400 to 500 Kelvin. So this will always be a heat input. So we should be able to see some sort of a convection current being set up, like so. But uh, due to the uh, time varying input, it should be able to uh, you know, uh, make for an interesting uh, experiment. Of course, we can, uh, we can actually have this uh, also as a Heat flux, uh, heat flux, uh, boundary condition. We can also have it with radiation, etc., etc. But we can skip radiation and put it later. So this is this is the plan. We'll have um, we want to have some uh, heat input here and uh, heat output here. Okay, and this is a time varying input. How are we gonna do this? Well, not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, places will tell you. Okay, but we can start looking here. Okay, it's uh, open form V1812, new boundary conditions. Of course, if we go and look at the other version of open form, you will be able to see the uh, boundary time varying in the uh, boundary conditions as well. It's over here. So I suppose I can give you both links, though I'm using the openform.com, the ESI version. See, ESI. Um, so this is how the other version of OpenFoam do does it. CFD Direct. Okay, they do it like so. But uh, I use the ESI version, so I'm going to do it like so. Um, this, this is called a uniform fixed value. This is called new generalized boundary condition, uniform fixed value. It is a special version of the fixed value that takes a single value. All right. And so in previous releases, is a spatially uniform but time varying function with additional input. So it can interpolate in time from a CSV file. So basically you, you put in a CSV file, okay, and then you tell you tell the open form, okay, how do I read this CSV file? So you have the type, you have the the header line, which line is the header, which is the reference column, the component column, the, the separator is of course a comma. You don't merge the separator, and this is the input file. 
So we want to take a look at what this uniform fixed value is. This will be very interesting to study. Okay, so in this release, it has been extended also. The API has been extended to allow spatially varying functionality. Meaning to say, if, okay, originally in this case, this whole thing here is uniform. But let's say you want most of the heat to be in the center so that your temperature profile is something like this green curve here. And it's getting so messy. But yeah, you get what I mean. You, you can have a spatially varying uh, kind of boundary condition, not an issue. Uh, using this uh, uniform fixed value. So, for example, you have a swirl velocity boundary condition, you have this, uh, you have two vectors, I think, uh, and you will just do something like this. Uh, you'll do a swirling kind of thing for a velocity boundary condition, and then we have a time ram ramping uh, annular profile meaning to say it's uh, time varying and spatially varying. You can do this as well. And this is a, uh, yeah, this is uh, where we can find it. So, um, and interestingly, the source code is found in foam underscore SRC. So if you are interested in doing all this, uh, you're gonna see the C files uh, inside foam SRC. Okay, it will all be here. And if you look at it, this is the foam tutorials folder. So we can go to SRC. And this is where we'll find all our uh, C files. So for example, I go to mesh. And I'll go to block mesh. Alright, so we go to block mesh. Yep, so you see all the C files. You can see... Uh, for example, clear L V I block mesh create dot C. So this is what the the block mesh dot C is like. It will uh it will do its thing, and this is the very intense math behind it. Um, you have some functions here. These are all in C, which I won't C or C plus plus. I will not discuss it now. This is outside the scope. But that's if you're interested, all right? And it will be good uh, if you want to do advanced open form like modification, solver modification. It's good to understand how the files behind are being uh, read and everything. So let's take a look at uh, uniform fixed value. This is a very, uh, very good part to look at. Uniform fixed value. So this is the user guide. So oh great. <laughs> Form function one. There's nothing. Yes, okay. So what it tells you, okay, how how are you supposed to specify this? You put a uniform fixed value in, then the uniform value will be the function. What is this function? Is a form function one type allowing the value to be prescribed as a function of time. For example, to ram vector values from 0, 0, 0 to 10, 0, 0 over 5 seconds, you can do this. So uniform value table, and you will have this ramping from 0 seconds to 5 seconds. So at 0 seconds, it is 0, 0, 0. It ramps up to 5. So at 5 seconds, this will be the value. Of course, you, you can um, put more than one, so you can keep ramping it up and down. Uh, but of course, the CSV file is way more convenient. So we can take a look at this uh, form function one. Okay. Form function one. Uh, okay. It's a top level data entry class for use in dictionaries, constant or table. To so provide functions to return the interpolated value and integral between limits. All right. So this is where the files are. Okay. You can look into the C files which I don't think, yeah, this is on some sort of development place. It's not really GitHub, I think, but okay. C++, ignore, let's go. All right, uh, let me explain. Okay, so you can have a constant of type, one constant of type. You can even have polynomial, scale, sign, square wave, table, uh, zero constant, blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
So I'm hoping to see whether it can find a CSV. CSV? Yes. Um, all right. So this is where the data can come from. It can come from CSV. All right. So it, it's getting a bit complicated. Uh, I'm not going to delve in too much. But uh, the example is already given here. The type is CSV file. So let's see. Uh, CSV file. I don't see it there. Uh, but since we can write it like that, we can just take this as a, um, can take this as a, uh, what do you call that? Yeah, I just take this as the one of the way to write it. I mean, the most convenient is CSV, but we can do sine wave, uh, cosine wave, anything we want. Okay, so at least, uh, at least we know that it's possible to do a time bearing boundary condition and Hopefully, you see how it's being done. So sine wave is one of the most simple boundary condition. So, for example, you have it like that: sine and the, the coefficients, the frequency and amplitude are given, and the scale and level are also given. Okay, so this is a sine, uh, sine type kind of thing. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it as here before we get too deep and too much uh, information for one video. I will leave it as this. This shouldn't be here anymore. Yeah, so um, in terms of this, uh, we want to do time varying, uh, time varying boundary conditions for pimple foam. And this at least gives us some clue as to how to do it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Uh, where we can uh, take a look at setting up our interesting case with a time-bearing boundary condition. Thanks for watching.